All right. Hi, Sophie. Hi. Thank you for doing this interview. And the first thing I want to say again is thank you so much for everything you do for the other players in uh, Chess Dojo. Um, it's really, really wonderful for us to have you. Thank you. Um, I'm. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. I'm. You know, it's a really great opportunity for me to participate in this tournament, and I'm so excited. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. I hope that 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 this tournament gives you a sense that we really are grateful for you. I hope. I hope that you do feel appreciated. Um, but sure, let's launch right in and talk about the tournament for a moment. So, is excitement your main feeling? What 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 are your uh, or what other feelings do you have about going into this this uh, tournament here? I'm always a little nervous. Like I don't think that's I think that's true for every tournament I've been in. Just like there's always that pre-tournament jitters and. Um, you know, I always want to do my best and I, I always want to like not disappoint myself and not disappoint, like, especially since it's a team tournament, not disappoint the chess dojo team that I'm, I'm representing here. Mm -hmm. Um, and overall, I'm just really glad to be able to participate in a chess event because I feel like I've been a little disconnected from the chess community lately because school has taken up so much of my time, but like, I really still enjoy chess and I love chess and um I every yeah I, I just you know really miss the chess community too so okay there's a number of things in there I really want to know about one is does being nervous hurt you in your tournaments sometimes yeah I think so yeah I wish I could say it doesn't but it does does it hurt you more in the first game and then you get over it or can jitters like get you at any point Oh, really at any point like oftentimes it gets me like I don't want to jinx anything I don't know like I have to be careful because I don't want to jinx anything but a lot of the time it gets me in like the crucial rounds like the most important rounds often like the final rounds too mm -hmm. so yeah okay. that's the worst though so that's a, that's a bit of a monster that you're contending with whenever you play yeah um, okay and then the other little thing is um so since you've started school, have you not had any major chess events for like, I don't know, a couple months here? No, not really. Like, cause there are like very few chess players at my school, which is kind of sad. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I haven't really been able to connect with the chess community much at all. Like, especially in real life. Yeah. So there's not even like a, a chess club. There isn't even a chess club. Yeah. Hmm. It's too bad. <laughs> On the other hand, playing chess my freshman year of school didn't work out. Like I tried to and it just messed with my chess and my school. And I just, I personally had to switch to a system of playing chess during the breaks and not playing chess during the school year. Yeah, so. it's pretty much what I'm doing right now in terms of over the board tournaments. Um, I'm kind of promising to myself to not play any during the school year mm -hmm. and to just save that for breaks but okay. you know events like this are a fair game <laughs> okay do you have anything lined up for the uh like christmas new year kind of break oh, i don't know yet it would be cool if i could play in like the north american junior championships mm -hmm. um i'd like to do that because i love that tournament <laughs> okay cool well i hope that that works out for you um now another question about this uh tournament this weekend um Tell me about the field you're facing compared to other fields you face. Are these some of the stronger players that you've played in an OTB tournament before? Like, what's the average rating like? Have you played other events that were comparable to this invitational here? Oh, for sure. This is one of the stronger um, fields I've had to face. Um, okay. Like, probably one of the strongest fields. Um, and I'm so mm -hmm. excited for that. Like, <laughs> I, I really think that um, I'm going to have some great games and, um, yeah, I, I, I don't really get that many opportunities to face like stronger players, um, on a regular basis. So, um, I can't wait. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, you won't have to wait much longer. It's just a day away. Um, <laughs> now here's a question I get asked all the time on stream. People come in 
and you probably get the same question. They ask like, who's the highest rated or best player that you've beaten over the board? Oh my gosh. Um, I beat like an IM once. That's like the highest title that mm-hmm. I've beaten. You've beaten IM before. Over the board. So you'll be facing basically four players at that level this weekend. So this is a level against which you have won a classical game before. Okay, yeah. excellent. Excellent. Do you have any like hopes or ambitions or expectations about result in this event? Um, I don't want to lose all my games and I don't want to disappoint myself. Okay. And... Uh, whatever that means I, I don't want to say like exactly how many points i want to get because i feel like that'll be um i don't know i feel like i shouldn't do that to myself but, okay fair enough yeah. i don't want to make you talk about something you don't want to uh you know say or talk about so that's that's totally cool with me some people just want to take things move by move other people game by game other people you know that they, they've got performance goals or whatever so that's fine so um so you've played people at this level before and you don't want to disappoint yourself. That's what like stands out to me. Are you generally, do you generally have like a very high standard for yourself? Do you get mad if you make a mistake in a game you win? Oh yeah, I definitely think I put a lot of pressure on myself and I try to work on that, but I don't know how to, so yeah. So you don't think that that's uh, something that's like part of your strength or might be part of what, what makes you good? Yeah, I hope, I hope, like, my opponents aren't going to, like, see this before the tournament because, like, they I won't. don't know, that's kind of... Okay, that's good. <laughs> you can tell me if you're planning to play the Petrov defense against somebody and I won't tell them and they won't see. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, right, so, so you think that being hard on yourself is not one of the things that's made you good. It's something that you actually want to change? I think I would benefit from like loosening up a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I've always had this problem. I've, I mean, I've gotten a little bit better, just a little bit better over the years, but like barely. So, mm-hmm. right. So then like another question would be, let's say you got a chance to play against Magnus Carlson and just, I know it's like a random chance, but let's say that somehow Magnus beat you. Would you be upset about losing potentially? No, cause I'd expect it. Okay. Like, entirely so if there's enough of an expectation you're not always going to beat yourself up about everything oh yeah no not not always but if i was winning or if it was a clear draw yeah i would beat myself up (laughs) okay right so a clear mistake you probably would but let's say he somehow outplayed you with some some sort of cool new new to you ideas that would be not too tilting yeah, I'd be like, you know, that's rough, but like, that's Magnus Carlson for you. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so. kind of what you sign up for when you play him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Learn something. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Um, what does it feel like on your end to be the highest rated player in a tournament? Something that happens a lot to you in other chess dojo tournaments. Mm, I also put a lot of pressure on myself because... Um, you know, no one likes losing against low-rated players. And, um, yeah, oftentimes, I don't, I don't know. I also, like, it's also kind of weird because a lot of the time when I'm the highest-rated player in a tournament, I underperform. Mm-hmm. I, I tend to do that. I'm not sure why, but I, I do tend to do that. And it, I always put pressure on myself because I'm like, I want to prove myself wrong. Like, I want to prove to myself that I'm able to actually perform as the highest-rated player in a tournament, um, which actually, I guess I've done that well enough in some chess dojo tournaments but Mm -hmm. in over the board tournaments i haven't had as much luck okay so it's a situation that feels a little bit tough for you but you keep putting yourself in it partly to see what you can what you can do with that situation um i don't know just a lot of the tournaments i end up playing like just by coincidence by coincidence yeah i just i just tend to be one of the higher or highest rated players Uh um i don't know it's just hard to find strong opponents like like High rated. Yeah. I mean, like higher rated opponents. Of mm-hmm. course, like lower rated opponents could be very, very strong. But yeah, yeah. I mean, higher rated ones, particularly. So, but like when you sign up for a chess dojo tournament, you know that you'll be one of the top, you know, three seeds or or, or so. Um, and and you've played in a lot of our tournaments. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, what are you, um, what are you like expecting to get out of it when you're playing a tournament where you know you're going to be one of the higher seeds? Um, Yeah, with online tournaments like this, I guess I, I don't know. I mean, also the thing is like they happen so often and they're not like officially rated. So I put a little less pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's easier, easier, Mm -hmm. uh, in in the sense that I can like sort of relax a little bit more. Okay. So it can be a way to stay sharp without being in a super high pressure situation. Mm -hmm. I think of it that way. Cool. What is your favorite tournament that you've ever played in as far as uh, whatever characteristic matters to you? I don't know what you look for in a tournament. So what tournament do you have like the best feelings or memories or thoughts about? Okay. Um, this is, I feel like a lot of it has to do with like, not even just results, but like the location. Cause like, Mm -hmm. I really like playing in like, you know, um, national events where it's like, you know, this like, a super pretty um, location that we're in, um, like a really pretty hotel and stuff, or yeah. like just generally like you know, it's just you kind of feel it, it's just it's just good feeling, you know. Uh-huh. Um, like um, a lot of the national scholastic tournaments I've played in have been like that. Um, also, uh, the U.S. Juniors, that's definitely one of my favorite tournaments to play in. Okay. Um, yeah, so and that just, you've played sort of like live <laughs> OTB in St. Louis, right? I saw you play this mm-hmm. year. Have you played it several times already? Um, well, two times over the board, and then I played once online. Okay, cool. One of my favorite tournaments when I was like a very hungry teenager was a tournament at a hotel that had a really good buffet. I mean, I didn't, I didn't necessarily do well in the tournament, but like one of the main things I liked about that tournament that like actually, if I'm honest, like lodged in my memory was that like the hotel had really good food. I like, you know, I also met like, you know, I also saw Judah Polgar at that tournament, but like what really stood out was that I got to eat good food during the tournament. (laughs) Now what I want in a tournament is a tournament that offers childcare. (laughs) So it changes. Oh, I'm so sorry. The connection kind of like cut off for a little bit. So I didn't oh, hear shoot. like everything you said. Oh, sorry. Um, I was saying like what you look for in a tournament may change over time. You know, when I was a teenager, it was a tournament with good food. Now I'd want a tournament with uh, child care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to also mention the World Youth Championship. I played okay. in that once and it was awesome. But yeah, I just like, uh, I don't know. Just honestly, like. Yeah, I, I also love food as well, so definitely that plays a role. I definitely remembered having some good food at tournaments um, and just, like, being able to travel to tournaments and play in, like, yeah, like I said, just a super pretty location. Um, Where did and, you play the World Youth? Um, Uruguay. Cool. Yeah. It was so awesome. And, like, also I was with, like, a team and stuff. It was great. I, like, I, I just honestly, I, I, I'm going to – I already do miss like youth tournaments and um, like national, like, you know, scholastic championships so much. And I'm so sad that I can't play in them anymore. And I'm so sad that I wasn't able to play in them like my last year of um, high school slash secondary school, whatever you call it, you know? Right. Um, yeah. I, I'm honestly just, yeah, I was really bummed about that because those are some of my favorite tournaments ever to play in. And now that's just like, you know, that's just, I'll always hold that, as a memory, but I will never be able to experience it again. And, um, that just, you know, yeah, that kind of hurts a little bit. Yeah, no, that's a big loss. I, I hear you. I agree. I'm, I'm very sad for you to hear that. Um, looking forward to future tournaments. Um, what would you like to play? What tournaments like would you like to be going to next now that some youth tournaments are behind you? Um, and now you're an independent college age American adult. <laughs> yeah, definitely some of like the, um, you know, official like national championships, okay. those ones. Yeah. Um, those are kind of main goals, I guess. Like I want to be able to play in those. And so which ones um, like U.S. Open or? Well, U.S. Women's and 
U.S. Women's Championships. Okay, so you want to get into that. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. It's like a dream, you know? Okay. How how close are you to being able to play in that tournament? Oh, I have no idea. I probably like farther away than I think I am. Like to be realistic. Mm. I don't even know. Maybe a hundred feet eight points? Yeah, I don't know exactly what the requirements are though. Okay. I think it's probably largely invited based on rating. Yeah, I think it's a mix of FIDE and USCF ratings. Mm. But I don't know. Okay. Well, if that's your dream. Figure out what you got to do to get there. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I, I, it's pretty difficult when I can't play tournaments that much, but hopefully, like, hopefully I'm not, hopefully, like, I'll stay sharp enough to be able to still do well in tournaments and get my rating up enough to be able to play in, that, in those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I hope so. It'd be fun to see you there. Um, so that's a great goal. So your goal right now would be to get into those. Once you get into them, your goal will probably start to be to like get good enough to win it. <laughs> yeah, that would be just such an absolute dream for me to be able to win one of those championships. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, that would be awesome. Um, do you have a chess coach? At the moment, no, I don't. Um, yeah, actually, I, I haven't had like I haven't had one for a few years. Okay. So, yeah. So what what tools do you have at your disposal to continue like improving at chess? Like when you have when you are trying to get better at chess, what do you spend your time on? What do you what do you do? Um, I like don't have a training routine really. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of the things that just help most is just like watching a lot of games around people like a little higher rated or slash, you know, around my level, like something. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's a lot more helpful than watching the top GM games, stuff mm-hmm. like that. So yeah, okay. I don't know. I just, I just watch a lot of games and observe a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, you know, sometimes I watch live tournaments. I, also, I don't know. Also just like getting a lot of practice and stuff and definitely like playing training games against people. Like, um, classical time control training games that's mm-hmm. been like huge thing for me that's helped keep me sharp and mm-hmm. yeah i see so a big part of your strength is just practice just staying sharp and 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 getting in games and learning as you play yeah which i haven't been able to do as nearly as much as i wanted to but it's okay <laughs> did you watch the games from the u.s women's championships very closely last month no <laughs> i did no. not even though that's yeah. kind of like that would be about the level that of games that you'd like to watch normally? Yes, definitely. But I just haven't really gotten around to doing it, slash haven't had the time. Mm-hmm. But normally I would though. Okay. Just not just not this year. Yeah. I feel like just playing through like all of Carissa's games would already give you a sense of like what would it take to be like the champion. Or you could take whoever finished in last place and be like playing through all their games will tell me what I need to get to, to be the last person invited. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay, cool. Um, so that gives us a sense of where you're going and what you're working on. Um, let me ask you one or two questions outside of chess real quick. Um, what's something really fun to do that is not chess? Oh, I love eating food. Just like, yeah, just finding new food to eat, and I don't know why I love food, but I do. It, it like it's, it's my fuel, you know. Um, yeah. I'm also I'm like in particular I've you know lately been craving a lot of instant noodles and bubble tea. Those are my two main foods of choice. But okay, um, yeah, I yeah just trying all the new instant noodle and bubble tea flavors. It's my favorite thing. One of my favorite things to do. Nice. Um, I also really like um, just journaling and writing and um things like that but i haven't really had time to do that as much um and of course like just um yeah i also i also really enjoy dancing I don't, i'm not even a trained dancer i just like i just like doing it um yeah yeah <laughs> I, I think a lot of people enjoy dancing and very few of them are trained dancers <laughs> <laughs> um when you travel are you adventurous with trying 
new foods? Uh, I don't travel that much. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, yeah, it's been a long time since I've like traveled internationally, I think. Yeah. But I do like to try new foods when I can. When you can. Okay. Like if you go to a new place, are you looking to, you know, find something that's familiar to you or find something that's not familiar to you? Oh, well, usually, yeah, I like to uh, try like things that are a little different. Um, but I'm also like a picky eater. So I, I definitely have things that I know I don't like. And yeah. stuff. So. I have to balance it. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, if you had a choice for how to spend your weekend, what, what would rank higher? Like playing a chess tournament, going to a bunch of like awesome, like new food experiences or going dancing. Like if you had to pick like one of those activities is chess number one for you. It depends on the tournament. Like if it's a, if it's like, um, a big open tournament with like a lot of friends and stuff and just like a lot of people in general and, um, you know, just that sort of experience, then yeah, I'd say definitely. Um, yeah, but like other than that, you know, yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, I haven't really, yeah, I mean, I, I also enjoy like streaming a lot on the weekends too, because mm-hmm. it's when I have time. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just catching up with the chess community a little bit since I don't have time to do that. During cool. like school days. So are you a very social person? Uh, I generally, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, I burn out a lot, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Cause one thing you said about the tournaments you really liked was that there was like a team. That was one thing you mentioned about some of your favorite tournaments. Yeah. Um, and that's always really cool. And a cool thing about streaming is talking to people, right? Yes. I love just talking to like, you know, fellow chess enthusiasts. <laughs> it's one of my right. favorite things to do. Yeah. Now you've, um, you've done some streams that weren't chess, right? Like singing or like art or s- some yeah. sort of like different, <laughs> some different topics. Um, it, what, what are your sort of plans for your streaming channel right now? If you have, if you have them. Definitely focusing on chess, but like my other stream, my other streaming stuff, like some of my non chess stuff is mostly just me kind of goofing up, goofing off and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, um, I do also want to, I, I really, I also enjoy singing for my viewers on stream. So, mm-hmm. you know, I always definitely, I definitely want to incorporate that into my streams too, just like, you know, playing the piano, even though I'm terrible at it and just singing. That some sounds stuff. It feels much really more nerve wracking than a chess tournament to me do you feel nervous when you're gonna sing play piano or dance in front of a crowd online oh i i I love it i love it i just love it (laughs) do you feel nervous when you when you have to rap in front of viewers online sometimes yeah (laughs) it depends if i know the song or not yeah i mean i always pick songs like i know one time i like like wanted to give people a choice so like i came up with a list of four songs and i think i prepared three of the four songs or four of the five songs or something like that like i listened to them once or twice that week and then on stream people voted for the one song that i hadn't like <laughs> i was just like ah <laughs> so that 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 day i was nervous that one time how does that even how does that end up even being an option? Just like a song that you didn't know? I mean, like I sort of like vaguely knew it, but like like it's a song that I'd listened to before, but not like recently. So Yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah, I just kind of avoid that on my like altogether. Just like if I don't know it, I won't. You wouldn't put it I on the list. It. Yeah, I wouldn't That's even good put advice. it on the list. It's good advice. <laughs> I feel like I haven't been as good at that as like, I don't know. Sometimes I sing a song. I'm like, oh, I only know it halfway through. I'm just like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So you're from a slightly younger generation than me and you've been pandemic. So you've spent like a big chunk of your chess playing time online versus at OTB tournaments. It feels like it's still important to you to get back to OTB tournaments when you can. Is that 
Is that true? Is is online chess not something that could replace OTB for you? Um, definitely not. <laughs> okay. um, over the board chess, I feel like, like, is always an experience that just cannot really be replicated any other way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so even if you get, like, because we've, here we've put together, you know, like, classical time control, strong opponents, pairings in advance, like, you could prepare for your games if you wanted to. Um... <laughs> We've put together a lot of the pieces of an OTB tournament, except that it's online, prize fund. Yeah. But that's never quite going to do it for you, right? It's it's a great experience, though. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, that's awesome, and I am for I am just infinitely grateful to have this opportunity. Yeah, I mean, it's not the same, but it's like pretty much as good as you could get without being like an over the board tournament you know right but you don't expect like after you play this tournament you'll be like yeah i don't need to go to otb anymore i'll just do this kind of thing <laughs> well yeah i mean i'll definitely play yeah um in over the board tournaments um if i can uh definitely i don't think i can i can imagine giving that up yeah what what's more fun by the way blitz bullet classical rapid is there like a time control that's most fun for you Oh, it depends on my mood, I think. At times, I've, like, said different things. At times, I've said, oh, I really like Blitz, or I really like Bullet, or I really like Classical or Rapid. Like, at times, like, I've had changed my mind about that, but I think, like, now what I would say is it just really depends on how I'm feeling at the time, you know, just what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I hear that. Um, and then I had one more question... Oh, yes. The secret question, which I promised not to like, you know, accidentally let slip or reveal too early or anything like that. But what kind of preparation are you doing for this all-star tournament? I have a file um, on uh, the site that shall not be named, okay. I guess. You can, you can name any site you want. Even the L word? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have some opening files on leechess.org and okay. I'm, I created all of them. Um, and I'm still, uh, still have to go through them to like refresh my memory and just like, and these sure files are your, these files are your repertoire, your creation, like position, like lines you want to play. Yeah, pretty much. But I don't know for sure if I'm going to get those lines over the board. I just like, I just want to be prepared. Right. Is this preparation based off of like the openings you like or based off of also looking what openings your opponents play? Oh, definitely both. Um, okay. So you've done yeah, both I, already. Yeah, I change it up a lot depending on what my opponents play. Nice, nice, nice. And if you looked at your opponent's games, did you notice any weaknesses in, in their play? Um, it's like one of my opponents like plays a lot of different openings. Mm -hmm. um, so they probably don't have like as deep an opening knowledge as like people who kind of stick with the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like kind of the biggest thing I noticed. I didn't really like look at anyone's games, um, like in full. I didn't really play, play through like uh -huh. people's entire games to kind of get that full picture. But you were just checking sort of what their opening repertoire looks like. Pretty much, yeah. So you don't know who, like, makes mistakes late in the game or who gets a lot of saves or who gets tired or anything of that sort? I don't have a deep knowledge of that. I kind of have a general idea based on, like, kind of what I'm already familiar with regarding okay. some of these opponents, like, um, okay. about their styles, their mm -hmm. playing styles, basically. Um, but, like, other than that, yeah, I don't really have any sort of deep knowledge on, on that. Okay, cool. Do you think that the dojo team of four dojoers has a chance of overall winning this match against the four invited stars who are like probably an average 200 feet eight points higher rated? Oh, yeah, for sure. I believe in my team. We could do this. <laughs> All right. Show them what the dojo's made of. All right. I can't wait. I can't wait to cheer for your first win this weekend. The very first point that comes in. I'm going to be screaming. Don't get distracted. Ooh. Don't get distracted. But know <laughs> that I will be cheering for you. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, definitely cheering for the rest of my team as well, and for everybody, you know. Great. You know, it's all good, fun, and stuff. You know, Absolutely. everyone. I hope everyone has a good time in this tournament, of course. Yeah, yeah. Which is not usually the case at a chess tournament. There's always, you know, somebody who lost a game and is really in a bad mood at the end. Mm-hmm. But we hope can that hope. That will be me. But we can hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Best of luck to you. I'm going to stop the recording here. We can still chat for a minute and say goodbye nicely and all to each other. But um, thank you very much for your time, for doing this interview, for participating in all our events. Uh, We're very, very happy to have you. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here.